Hey, good Thursday afternoon, everybody. This is Andy Kidd back with you, Truck Your Life Up. Um, so I did a video the other day about uh, just kind of introducing myself and, you know, talking about how my journey started at USA. And this is my second uh, go round with USA. I actually started in January last year. A and I say that, I mean, to me, I really didn't do anything other than this because I did leave, but I was only with that other company a couple of weeks. It was just a timing thing. Um, I had no choice. You know, the truck that I had was garbage. Um, it went into the shop 115,000 times, and yet uh, it never seemed to be fixed. So it was electrical problems, and you all know that that stuff can be really tough to run down. And so I, apparently they had a hard time running down exactly what it was. Um, so I, I just had to give up on it. I couldn't do it anymore with that truck. I was... Um, you know, I was making great money as long as I was able to be able to run. Uh, but the problem was, was I would be able to run for say a week and then I would be in the shop for a week, run for a week or two and then be in the shop for a week. So it was like, you're making half the money that you could potentially make and just totally tearing the, the maintenance fund all to pieces. By the time that I finally reached my tipping point, my maintenance fund was completely gone. And when I, I mean, there wasn't a red cent in it. It, it was gone. Um, so that, that should tell you everything that you ought to, that you need to know. Uh, you know, um, and that was from January until August. So in the span of eight months, I spent every freaking dime that I put in that maintenance account on repairs. Um, which, you know, I mean, it's, look, when you're an owner operator, I mean, that's what you do, right? You know, you're responsible for repairing the truck. Um, and all of that stuff. Uh, so you're re you're responsible for the good and the bad. You're responsible for making a little bit more money, but you're also responsible for, you know, anything to do with the truck. You know, you're responsible for your own freaking hotel while the truck's being repaired, all of that stuff. So you, you come prepared, you know, this is not a uh, an adventure that you want to take without two, you know, nickels to rub together. That's for sure. Luckily, I had some money in the bank. So but whenever that started going away, you know, and started depleting and my maintenance fund was depleting, I said, ah, I better do something different. So I did. And um, I went to another company and it just didn't, you know, the, the old, uh, well, my recruiter said, okay, well, it was one of those kind of deals. And, uh, you know, I went to this other company and everything was fine. I mean, they're not a terrible company. It just wasn't what the recruiter said it was going to be. So I reached out to USA, come back. Anyway, um, I've been went through all that in the first video. So today, I uh, want to kind of talk about like the starting process, right? Okay, so for me, um, I reached out to USA right around the end of November in 2020. And they got back in touch with me within a day or so. Not sure what their recruiter situation is like now. I know at that time they only had like two recruiters. So it took them a little while to get back to me. Um, in any event, uh, went through that process and then, um, you know, they got me lined up with the leasing companies and I called like every one of them. The only company that had anything that would be ready when I was gonna be ready was Bush. Um, other than TEL, I didn't quite have enough uh, verifiable experience under my belt for TEL at that time. Um, so anyway, so I got in touch with Bush. We worked all that out, and that's where I got that first truck from. Um, they were easy to deal with, but, you know, I mean, it is it is what it is. If you get an older truck, expect to have older truck problems. Um, if you get a newer truck, sometimes, you know, you drive it and the, the kinks work themselves out. I mean, you know, what I'm in now is a 2022 Cascadia. Um, it's, a, it's an okay truck. It's pretty pretty bare bones. I mean, it doesn't have anything special on it other than a fridge and an inverter. You know, it's got that. It came with that. Uh, but, I mean, it's a basic Cascadia. There's nothing fancy about it. Um, nonetheless, uh, it is a brand new truck. Knock on wood, I've not had any issues with it so far. Um, I haven't been in the shop for anything other than just service. So, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track, as, as I like to do. You know, I, I say that I have uh, some kind of ADHD. Seems like the older that I get, the worse it gets to. My mind just can't stay on track, nonetheless. So uh, uh, so I applied, got lined up with Bush, and then USA did all of their stuff. And um, it was the beginning of January last year. 
uh, when I went to orientation the first time. And uh, that orientation was at Tip City, Ohio. Um, they have a pretty decent sized terminal there. Tip City, if you're familiar with it, is right outside of Dayton. Um, it was colder than hell that week that I was there. Uh, it was raining, it was snowing, it was all of that shit, you know, and um, friggin' miserable, you know. Uh, the hotel at that time was a, a day's in. Uh, there was a Buffalo Wild Wings within walking distance of it, but for Christ's sake, man, it was so cold. Um, I think I only walked down there twice the entire week I was there, and I was there a little bit longer than everybody else, and I'll, I'll get into that in a minute, but um, orientation wasn't bad. Um, you know, it was, uh, I mean, they, you know, just like a lot of companies do, they covered a lot of junk that they could really get by with just sending you home to the, uh, you know, get sending you back to the motel with some videos to watch or whatever. Right. But it wasn't horrible. Uh, it wasn't totally terrible. You do a road test. Um, if you have to have a physical or drug test, you do that. Um, I already had all that stuff. So all I had to do was the road test. Road test wasn't nothing hard you do like a mini pre-trip type deal just basically so that you you could show them that um that you know how to do one and before you do any of that stuff they actually do a pre-trip one of the instructors does a pre-trip and shows you what they're looking for so it wasn't anything super fancy or super hard um, i'm not saying that some people don't fail it because they probably become i'm sorry they should probably show up ill-prepared you know, for to doing that, for doing that kind of stuff. But nonetheless, if you're an experienced driver, um, even if you're not a super experienced driver, you'll have no problem with the road test, the backing test, which is pretty much a an alley dock type backing test, um, or a uh, or the pre trip thing. Um, and that was the first day of orientation. They do feed you. Uh, the, the hotel had like some kind of continental deal, like you get a muffin and a drink and whatever. Um, that was every morning, you know, the, the hotel. And then um, during orientation, seems like the first day you get like a, a chicken box uh, with like chicken tenders, a biscuit and some potato wedges or whatever. Uh, then the next day you get like Subway and then the last day it's like pizza, you know, they order from Pizza Hut or something and um, they bring in a bunch of pizzas, all different kinds and whatever. And um, so it wasn't bad, you know, they feed you pretty well. Now you're responsible for your own supper, you know, so just keep that in mind, you know, whenever you're, whenever you're planning on going to orientation that you have to, you know, you're going to be responsible for your own supper uh, while you're there. So. You know, my advice, um, because I keep a lot of like food in here, you know, in the truck, uh, would be to show up to orientation with some kind of food stuffs, you know, like uh, maybe some canned ravioli and some bowls, you know, just whatever, right? Just some stuff that you can throw in the microwave and nuke and eat real quick or just something to tide you over, you know, but either way, you know, um, the the food was okay. The, uh, the, the first hotel that I stayed at, like I said, it was the Days Inn. Uh, in, uh, I don't know how you say it, Huber Heights, Uber Heights, I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, but they've since moved, I believe, to the Clarion. Um, and uh, the Clarion's a little rougher, in my opinion. Because um, the second time that I went through when I came back, I, went, I stayed there at that Clarion. It was just a little, uh, it was a little dumpier. But the breakfast was better. Uh, the breakfast was an actual breakfast, like eggs and sausage and bacon and, you know, biscuits with gravy and whatever else, you know, that kind of stuff, like home fries, you know, that, that type deal. And, uh, but the, the lunch and everything was still the same. Orientation, um, is supposed to be like two days. Uh, the first time I was there, I ended up being there like way longer than that because there was an issue with my clearing house. Like it, they couldn't get the the clearing house back because the state of Georgia was, uh, you know, doing some kind of friggin' maintenance on their server or some kind of junk, man. So, and then there was a holiday that following Monday. So <laughs> I ended up not getting out of there until like Tuesday, the following week and orientation started, I believe on Tuesday. So it was a, it was a total nightmare, but, um, the, the one thing that I will say that I wish they would do an orientation, I wish that they would kind of, I'm not going to say split the group up between company and, and uh, ICs, but they should have someone there 
um, you know, who can show the ICs the ropes a little bit as far as like how to use the app, um, you know, how to, use, how to log into the load board, how to select loads, you know, that kind of thing. Um, again, it wasn't really that big of a, you know, like that big of a deal, but, but, you know, for somebody that's not technically savvy or, or, uh, you know, can't navigate the load board, it would have been nice to have at least touched it and said, okay, well, here's, here's how we do this. And, um, here's how you request a load. Here's how you set your parameters as to what you're trying to select here. And, um, you know, uh, just whatever, just that kind of thing. Um, it would have been nice. Um, again, uh, you know, but I can't really complain too much about the orientation other than just it was my own personal crap why I got stuck there for that long length of time. The, um, the, uh, the second time I went through orientation, it was the same thing with the exception of on day three, I got out of there. So, uh, day three, um, truck was ready. It was already stickered out. They had already put the, um, uh, the tablet in the thing, um, you know, everything was ready to go. All I had to do was just sign into the tablet, you know, pick me out a load and then get gone. Um, as I addressed in the other video, once in a blue moon, you might get lucky at a USA terminal and find an empty trailer. Uh, when you do play the damn lottery the same day, because uh, you are one lucky individual. Um, it is very, very rare. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I dropped an empty trailer in the Atlanta there's two terminals in Atlanta. There's one where the shop is and there's one where the, uh, like the actual terminal is with showers and they do orientation there and that kind of stuff, park trucks, whatever, drop yard, all that kind of jazz. The shop's kind of a drop yard too, but, so I dropped an empty trailer in there at the shop and there was a freaking guy walking around there looking for empties and he saw me with an empty trailer and he like begged me to have it. And I said, yeah, man, you're more than welcome to it because I'm going home. And, uh, he was, he was really happy, um, because you, you will at times, uh, get sent on some wild goose chases, you know, um, anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for today. Uh, you know, orientation, if, if anyone has any questions, uh, comments or concerns, um, you know, keep them kind of professional, of course, and, uh, feel free to ask me down in the comments and I will, I will respond. I respond to every single comment where there's a question or, uh, you know, comment about, uh, you know, hell, maybe you don't like my hat. Hell, I don't care. We, we can argue about my hat for all I care, but, um, nonetheless, I hope everybody has a great week. Stay safe out there. And there's apparently another winter storm coming in towards the Southeast and up into the Northeast. Um, I am going to avoid that like the plague. Uh, so I'll be heading west. I'm in South Carolina now, going home for a couple days, and then I'm uh, I'm headed west. So I'll be sure to avoid this uh, second uh, second winter adventure, you know, for the southeast already in the span of a, about a week and a half. But uh, anyway, you all be safe out there. Um, you know, just uh, you know, try to do your best to avoid that winter weather and stay out of the ditch. You take care.